Yo, what's going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, it might not seem like it, but it actually has been a while since I've played live. Almost like a week, but I've been playing a lot of online poker recently, doing other things. So I haven't played live in a while, but we're back at Boston Village right outside. And first time we're rocking these bad boys. Oh, it's upside down. There it is. Folding is boring. First time rocking the carpet deck. So we'll see what kind of luck box stuff that it can come out of this. But we're playing 1-2, I think, or 1-3. I don't think we're going to play the T5. Just not too many games running, I don't think. So... Yeah, I don't know. That's all we got. Short intro. Let's just get right into the action and hopefully try to run it up. It's also a really gorgeous day right now in New England. Almost like springs here, but it's gonna snow next week, obviously. Anyways, let's just let's let's just get to the poker. I hope you strapped in your seatbelt, everyone, because this session is quite the ride. First hand here at this 1-3 session, we pick up Queen Jack offsuit in plus one. Playing six-handed, I'm gonna open this up to $12. We get the player to my left and the small blind to call. Three ways to a flop, which is as good as it gets. 10, 9, 8, 2 hearts. That's right, flopping the nuts, and when the small blind checks to us, we're going to see about $25 here with the nut straight. There are plenty draws out there that we can get value from, so with my $25 bet, only the player to my left makes the call. The turn now is the 7 of spades, so two flush draws out there, four liner on the board, and nothing's changed with still the nuts. On such a wet board, I think we can get value from a lot of different holdings. So with that said, I size up to $100 as he covers us and I want to get stacks in. But unfortunately, he folds fairly quickly. So no more action for us after seeing probably a really good turn from my perspective. Not a great turn for his. Things get really short here in this game. And right now we're playing three handed and we're in the small blind looking down at 6-4 of diamonds. There's a button limper to $3, and with a suited gapper, we're going to raise this up three-handed. I size to $15. The big blind calls, and so does the button. So out of position, two a flop of 6-4, deuce, two hearts, and a club. Flopping top two with 6-4 is going to be pretty tough, but here we are. I see bet $20 here on a beautiful board for us. Only the big blind makes the call. Not entirely sure what he can hold, but I'm assuming a lot of draws. The turn now comes the eight of clubs. Once again, another situation where there are two flush draws and we've got to assume our two pair is good. So I fire again for $45, but this time, once again, no more value, he folds. We've been card dead for quite some time now and here in this hand, we pick up jack eight of clubs in the cutoff, the most playable hand in an hour so far. So when there's one limper, I'm gonna raise this up to $15. We get the big blind to make the call and so does the limper. Going three ways to a flop, which comes 9-5, deuce, two diamonds, and a club. When action checks to me, we're sitting with jack high and absolutely no draws. We'll take a free card here and see what happens. We check, and the turn comes the four of clubs. So we've improved to our jack high flush draw, but now the big line throws out a bet of $25. That price seems okay, especially when the limper makes the call for 25 Very much priced in. We make the call, hoping to see a club on the river. The river now comes the deuce of hearts, pretty much a brick on this board. And here, surprisingly, the big blind slows down and checks. The limper checks to us as well. And sitting with jack high, we obviously know we can't win this. How often is this big blind player going to be able to fold like a 9x holding or maybe some sort of 5x holding that he led into the field with on the turn? I'm not sure, but uh, definitely am incentivized to be bluffing here. But here, I just don't think I'm getting any folds when I bluff, so I just check it back and give up. The big blind shows us 9-4 of hearts for turned two pair. Certainly was never going to fold this hand in this boar texture, so everyone mucks and we lose this one. So once again, another hour goes by as we are in car dead city, population us. But now this hand with queen jack offsuit and under the gun and there's a button straddle. Finally, a hand we can play. When the big blind limps for $5, I'm gonna raise this up to 25. Only the button straddler makes the call and the big blind limper who limped in for two extra dollars actually folds. So let's go to a flop against the straddler. The flop comes king, jack, deuce, two hearts, and a club. All things considered, pretty good board for us with middle pair and backdoor straight draws. I see bet $25, and now he actually puts in more aggression as 25 isn't enough. He raises the $65, and sitting with middle pair, decent kicker. Sure, we certainly can be ahead of some draws of some sort, but this action definitely seems like it's for value, and our hand isn't good enough to defend. So I fold, and this player shows us king deuce offsuit for the vlog, so 
If you're gonna play King Deuce off suit, flopping two pair is gonna be pretty good for you. Hand after that, pocket threes in the small blind. Let's go set mining. There's a limper, then a cutoff raised to $20. Here, let's just try to hit a three on the flop. I call for 20. Now the big blind calls and so does a limper. Multi-way, the flop comes ace, eight, nine, two spades. It's whiff city, but when action checks around, we get to see a free turn. The turn is the queen of clubs. So once again, another whiff for us. I check, checked around to the limper who bets out $20. We are definitely out of this one. And for the people asking, sometimes we do whiff flops when we go set mining. We can't hit a set every single time. After that thriller of a hand, we have king nine offsuit on the button and action folds around to me. Well, I'm certainly gonna open this one up, so I size to $12. Small blind folds, but the big blind likes his hand enough to make the call for nine more. The flop comes nine high, which is pretty good. Nine, seven, deuce, two clubs. And when he checks to us with top pair, pretty good kicker. I see bet $20, and he folds. But hey, this one we actually won, so finally picking up a winning hand and showcasing it on the vlog. This next hand is a little bit more playable. Ace, 10 of spades on the button, and there's an only gun straddle. So action folds to the cutoff who open limps here, certainly raising it up. So I size to $25 action folds to the only gun straddler who defends his straddle for 25 and surprisingly the cutoff limper folds. So going heads up to a flop, which comes queen four, four, two hearts and a diamond. He checks to us and on paired boards and neutral board textures certainly have range advantage and can be good here with ace high. So I see bet really small, just $15. Don't think we need to bet too big in the spot. And with his $15 bet, he makes the call. The turn comes the five of diamonds, board getting a little bit more wet with two flush draws out there. So when he checks to me, I don't think I need to bet this one. Uh, I'm certainly just gonna check it back and see a river. The river is the seven of hearts. So front door flush draw gets there. Ho really hoping he checks so we can get the showdown and he does oblige with that. Happy to check it back with ace high. And this player shows king eight of diamonds for king high. We win another one, two hands in a row now. I think we might be on a heater. Okay, everyone, finally we look down at a premium. Pocket King's under the gun and there's a button straddle. There's a big blind player who limps and certainly gonna raise it up. I size to $25. Plus one makes the call for 25 and so does the button. Big blind limper once again folds, so three ways to a flop, which is 10, six, five, two hearts. On this board texture with an over pair, certainly going to be C betting for sure. I size to $55 and we only get one player to make the call, the player to my left. So we're gonna see a turn hoping to see a brick one. The turn is the seven of clubs. Not necessarily an amazing card for us. It does complete a lot of two pair combinations that he might have. Also could complete eight, nine for a straight as well. Here first to act with a card better for his range. I'm gonna balance a little bit and just check. After my check, he checks it back. So interesting, but I think our hand is good. Hoping to fade a hearts now. The river is the deuce of spades, pretty much the most brick river possible. Not really sure what I can get value from besides maybe 10 X. I certainly can check this one and allow hands with no showdown to bluff, but I don't think this player is too prone to bluffing too much. So I size up and bet out really large to $200, trying to target 10 X holdings, maybe look like a bluff and maybe just get other bluff catchers to call. But now here onto him, he tanks for just a little bit, but eventually makes the fold. We don't get value here, maybe acted a little too greedy and took a really strange line with pocket kings, but um, yeah, probably misplayed this one, didn't get the maximum, but here we are. From pocket kings comes to king 10 of hearts in the small blind. There's a tight player in early position that opens the $15, opening up to 5x. There are two players to make the call, and here I certainly can be folding this one since we're in the small blind, but considering how we've really gotten no interesting footage so far in this session, I make the call since we're trying to get some content. The flop comes king, jack, deuce, rainbow, so sitting with top pair, not really the worst flop in the world, but I check, and now the tight player c-bets $35 into the field of three other players. One player folds, now the cutoff makes the call and back onto me to close out the action on the flop. I think this is a really weird spot out of position, but considering how tight I think the pre-flop razor is and now seeing a call, I don't think our 10 kicker is gonna play too much and I think we're dominated very often. So I actually decided on a fold, but really curious to see what happens. So they go heads up to a turn, which is a nine. Interestingly enough, 
action goes check check so i don't think anyone has queen 10. the river now comes a 10 and action once again goes check check and the preflop razor actually shows ace 10 versus the cutoffs queen jack so queen jack actually ends up getting there for the rivered straight but Looks like we made the wrong fold on the flop with top pair, but given the dynamics of the table so far, just thought my fold was good, but obviously not. This exhilarating session can only last so far, but this last hand here, pocket nines on the button. There's an unigun limper, and with a pocket pair, I raise it up to $15. We get the big blind to call, and so does the unigun. The flop comes 10, 10, 8, 2 hearts, and when action checks to me, once again, on paired boards, we gotta assume that our pocket nines has to be good, so I see bet $30, and only the Unigun Limper makes the call. The turn now comes the four of clubs. Once again, he checks, and I think on this turn, we're gonna have to go for value again. We can certainly get a lot of value from heart draws, obviously, some 8x holdings, who knows. I bet $40, and he does make the call for 40 so a little bit of a pot brewing here. Let's see a river. The river is the five of clubs, and when he checks to us, I don't really know how thin we can go for value here in this instance, so I'm just gonna check it back as we don't really have that many hands to target. This player shows us ace queen of spades, so he limped on the gun with ace queen suited, called flop and turn, and happy to take this pot down, closing up the session with another winner. I hope you guys enjoyed the most boring session I've ever played in my life. Wow. Uh, wow. I, I guess when you play a lot of sessions and a lot of poker, like one of these are bound to happen. And when you vlog every single one of them, you, you get one of these really awful videos. I don't know if you guys enjoyed it, but overall it was a huge grind. We actually were stuck a, a few hundred bucks, $200. Just, I was raising a lot, going multi-way, totally with them. And those weren't really cool to add, but I guess this is part of poker. You grind out some really boring sessions. We were in the game for $765, out of the game for 830. So I found a way to crawl out of the hole through all the boringness. That's all I got. Hopefully, I wish I got paid in that king's hand. Maybe I was a little too greedy there, but that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. This was horrible, but if you enjoyed it, leave a like. I, I, you guys did not suffer through the video as much as I suffered through this session. Let's just say that, but thanks so much for watching. See you guys in the next one. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more entertaining. Peace out.